fellow bookworms to Timber's Den. My name is Whitney and today I have my June TBR which I am so excited to share with you guys. I have a lot of great books on this TBR and I can't wait to show you guys and then get into reading them. Um, but before I do, if you guys could go ahead and give this video a like, it really does help with the channel. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on a thing. So I really try to prioritize my books I need to read and then also balance that with the books that I want to read. So I try to kind of find a good balance between, you know, the books that I need to get to and the books I want to get to. Uh, and I think I did a good job. And the ones I need to get to, I also want to read. It's just, you know, there's a lot of books that I hauled recently that I'm so excited to get to. Um, and so it was like, which, which ones? Uh, and I think I did a good job. And then of course I'll get to more of the books I want to in July, hopefully. But uh, yeah, I got a lot here. If you saw my May wrap up, I read almost 30 books. And I say almost because one of the books I only got halfway through. And that is The Origin by Irving Stone. This book follows uh, Charles Darwin as a young man in his early 20s as he sails around the world and discovers a bunch of animals and such. So it has been so much fun reading this book, but it is very dense and thick. It's almost 750 pages. I think actually a little over 750 pages. And the writing's tiny and packed in there. Um, very similar to The Tenets of Time, which took me so long to read. And so I've been trying to kind of balance this one. I don't want to push myself so hard that I get burnt out like I did with The Tenets of Time. But at the same time, I want to make sure I'm making progress. Because of the tens of time, I ended up prioritizing other reads and not really getting to it one month. And so I'm really trying to balance that. And so far, I've done a good job at that. Uh, and so I've just been trying to read like a chapter or so a day. And I am on to the second half of the book now. Uh, and so I'll just continue on. And I'm hoping I can finish this in the first half of... June and that way I can add on another thick chunky book that's pretty dense and that is the third in the Otherland series by Tad Williams, Mountain of Black Glass. I read the first two in April and absolutely loved them which was a pleasant surprise to me. So I recently hauled the next two and I really want to get to them but this is low priority. Um, I have a lot of other books I need to read and I want to read that if I don't get to this one, I'm not going to be too upset about it, even though I want to read it while the others are still fresh in my mind. But this series, you have a group of people and they go into like this virtual reality network, but there's something kind of sinister about it and there's something different. Like it's not your typical VR world. Um, they're kind of trapped there. They can't get out. And so they're trying to kind of unravel the secrets of this world and the higher ups and kind of discover what's going on with the children in the real world in connection to this virtual reality network. So really, really enjoy the first two. Takes a lot of inspiration from like different childhood fairy tales and such and even different stories like you have the War of the Worlds in there and some nursery rhymes like Humpty Dumpty, um, heavily like Alice in Wonderland inspired but there's just so much you got Peter Pan kind of inspiration so much goes on in here and really been enjoying it so hopefully if I can finish the origin the first half then I can start this one the second half because I can kind of do it where again I'm just reading a couple chapters and really focusing on my other reads for the month so Next up, we have the two books I need to read for my ABC author challenge. I am, like I said, trying to complete that this year. And so I kind of broke it down. I need to read two books a month minus one month where I'll need to read three books. Um, but they're, they're really tiny books that month. And so I'll easily be able to read those ones. But this month we have my M author, which is James Meek. And that's The People's Act of Love. I'll go ahead and read the synopsis because I can't quite remember what this one is about. So it says, In a remote Siberian village amid a lawless, unforgiving landscape lives Anna Petrovna. 
a beautiful, willfully self-reliant widowed mother, a mystical separatist Christian sect, a stranded regiment of restless Czech soldiers, and an eerie local shaman live nearby, all struggling against the elements and great social upheaval to maintain a fragile coexistence. Out of the wood trudges Samarin, an escapee from Russia's northernmost prison camp, with a terrifyingly outlandish story to tell about his journey. Immediately apprehended, he is brought before the Czech regiment's Megla megalomaniac Captain Matula, but the stranger's appearance has caught the attention of others, including Anna Petrovna's. The story, the stranger, his bizarre story, it is, if it is to be believed, and the apparent murder of the local shaman quickly becomes a flashpoint for this village. Temperatures rise, alliances shift, and betrayals emerge. Written with a commanding historical authority and remarkable grace, the people's act of love is an epic of desire and sacrifice that leaves the reader utterly memorized until the final page. So, really sounds interesting. Um, probably better to read in the winter since it's all snowy and such, but I think hopefully I will enjoy this. And maybe it will cool me off. It's already so hot here. Uh, that maybe it'll be nice to kind of read a snowy type landscape, but that is one of the ABC author books. And then the next one is one of the ones for my N author because I had to go by first name, which based on the rules I came up with, if I can go by first name, I then have to get another book. And so this one is by Natasha Preston and it's called The Seller. Um, and so yeah. I've never read this author, and this one is about, um, let's see, it says, My stomach dropped as a tall, dark-haired man stepped into view. Had he been hiding between the trees? So, let me, let me back up. It says, Lily. This is the first part. It says, Lily, my stomach dropped as a tall, dark-haired man stepped into view. Had he been hiding between the trees? No, sorry. Gulping, I took a step back. I'm not Lily. He shook his head, a satisfied grin on his face. No, you are Lily. I'm Summer. You have the wrong person, you utter freak. I could hear my pulse crashing in my ears. How stupid to give him my real name. He continued to stare at me, smiling. It made me feel sick. You are Lily, he repeated. Before I could blink, he threw his arms forward and grabbed me. I tried to shout, but he clasped his hand over my mouth, muffling screams. My heart raced. I'm going to die. For months, Summer is trapped in a cellar with a man who took her and three other girls, Rose, Poppy, and Violet, his perfect, pure flowers. His family, but his family, but flowers can't survive long cut off from the sun and time is running out. So I believe this is a young adult, like thriller, um, if I'm recalling right, but yeah, we'll, we'll see if I enjoy this or not, but definitely going to be giving it a try. And then next up, we have the books I need to read for my 25 days of book miss books. Now, some of these, so some of the books that my husband and sister-in-law chose were like second or third or whatever in the series. And so like last month I started the Green Rider series. They got me the fourth book, but obviously I wanted to start at the beginning. And I really, really enjoyed that one and I didn't want to rush through it. So I decided to hold off on reading the others until I kind of, I'm done prioritizing all these books and can kind of take my time with them. So that might be the case with some of these as well. Um, the first one is two books. There's more in the series, but I just have the first two. And the next one, I actually have five books. And so, like I said, if I decide I really enjoy them and I don't want to try to rush through them, I might not read all of these. Um, I might save them for later on, but I'm at least going to read the first book in these series and then kind of go from there. So the first one is um, Tiger's Curse series by Colleen Hook. Hawk? I'm not sure how you pronounce her last name. And so the first one is Tiger's Curse. And then the one that they had gotten me was Tiger's Quest, which is the second one in the series. 
absolutely love these covers. I think they are stunning. And I'm really, really hoping I enjoy these series. And I'll definitely be keeping my eye out for the others if I do. But like I said, I'm for sure going to read this one. And then if I decide, you know, that I want to continue it, but I don't care about rushing through, I'll go ahead and read this one. But it may just be the one. And so this one, let me see. I'll go ahead and read you the synopsis. It says, passion, fate, loyalty. Would you risk it all to change your destiny? The last thing Kelsey Hayes thought she'd be doing this summer was trying to break a 300-year-old Indian curse with a mysterious white tiger named Wren halfway around the world. But that's exactly what happened. Face-to-face -face with dark forces, spellbinding magic, and mystical worlds where nothing is what it seems, Kelsey risks everything to piece together an ancient prophecy that could break the curse forever. Tiger's Curse is the exciting first volume in an epic fantasy romance that will leave you breathless and yearning for more. So, really, really excited about this one, and I am really hoping I enjoy them, that they don't let me down, especially because I love these covers, and I would love to keep them on my shelves and gather the rest of them. So, obviously, the second one kind of falls on that one, and I believe if I remember right reading the um synopsis this one she now is with the brother from one of the characters in this one so um should be interesting there might have a little love triangle going on within the series itself I, i'm not sure but we shall see and then the other books from my 25 days of bookmas books is the series the nine kingdoms by Lynn Curlin. And so like I said, I have five. Um, my husband actually found four of them at the thrift store, which is where he got all the books for my 25 Days of Bookmas. They had the four in the collection. So I was missing the first one, which I went ahead and ordered. It's a little sad because it's shorter than the other ones, but at least the artwork matches. And so like I said, I'll for sure be reading this one. These ones aren't very thick. Um, so I'm thinking they'll probably be pretty easy reads. So I'm hoping I'll be able to read all of them. And I'll go ahead and read you the synopsis for this first one, which is Star of the Morning. And again, this is by Lynn Curlin. And so it says, the first novel of the Nine Kingdoms. Legend has it that only two magical swords held in trust by Neroche's rulers can defeat the evil of the black mage and never have they been more needed as the mage's assault begins to cover the kingdom in darkness the king has lost the magic to wield his own sword fortunately mayak the archmage of Narosh, and the king's brother has found a wielder for the other in morgan a young woman abandoned among mercenaries as a child now a feared mercenary herself but morgan despises magic and has no patience for the scheme Schemes of kings and mages, and too soon, Mayak must choose between endangering the woman who, who has captured his heart and defending the kingdom he is sworn to protect. For in this land of warriors, maids, and magical swords, nothing is as it seems. The king is less than he should be. Mayak is more than he appears, and Morgan will find that her mysterious past brings her trouble she cannot face with a sword alone. So... Probably butchering the pronunciations of those names. I know Neroshi, I think I pr pronounced that wrong initially and then probably not pronouncing it correctly now. Um, but really, really excited to start this one. Uh, I have read Lynn Curlin before. I have one book by her that I really, really enjoyed. So I'm excited to give her other books a try um and I'm hoping I really really enjoy this series like I said the first one is star of the morning and then we have the mage's daughter and then princess of the sword is the next one um then tapestry of spells and then finally we have a spell weaver again there are more books <laughs> in the series um, but these are the books I'm obviously going to be starting with. And like I said, I may just read the first one and then see if I want to wait and save the series for when I can fully enjoy it. But 
Next up is, of course, the continuation of the Dresden File series. I just have one more month. I need to read two books. Um, and so I'm going to try to do that this month. And I think I'm going to continue to try to read two books a month just so I can finish the series faster. Um, but I at least want to finish it this year, which if I read two books one month and then just a book a month, I should be able to do that. So first up is book 11, which is Turncoat. And I'm not going to read the synopsis on this one. Um, and then book 12 is Changes, which unfortunately has a little water damage, but shouldn't affect my being able to read it at all. It looks like everything's still intact. So, um, but if you're not familiar with the Dresden Files, it follows Harry, who is a private detective wizard in Chicago. Um, and he kind of works with the police. And there's kind of just this network of people, you know, both enemies and good people that he kind of works with. So really excited to see what the series brings because it's kind of getting more into the series plotline as a whole versus the individual book plotlines. And I really enjoyed the last two books. So like I said, hopefully I'll get to both of these. If not, as long as I get to at least one of them, I'll be happy. So um, we'll see what happens there. And then I do have a couple of Throwback Thursday books I want to do. I finally finished the horse portion of my childhood. Um, so I'm done with all those books. But I do have several dog-related books that we're going to be jumping into next. So the first one I want to read is Champion Dog Prince Tom by Jean Fritz and Tom Clute. Um, and this says, he was a small skinny puppy, the runt of the litter, but to Tom Clute, Prince was the best dog in the world. Tom never dreamed that his scrawny pup would someday become one of the most famous dogs in the land. Winner of so many titles, it took two breaths to say them all. It was Tom who trained Prince with love and patience. He taught him first to be a trick dog, then a TV performer, an obedience trial champion, and best of all, a prize-winning hunting dog. The life of this dog reads like an exciting adventure story, but it is the true story of a real champ. So, um, I remember reading this several times as a child, but not since then and I can't fully remember what it's about I mean obviously it's about the dog and his his story but I don't fully remember you know reading it so I'm excited to revisit this one for sure and then the other one that I don't know that I'm excited to read but I'm gonna do it anyway because I want to revisit all of these books that are on my shelf and that is Old Yeller by Fred Gibson Gibson um and yeah, obviously, I mean, most people should know what Old Yeller is about, but it's a very sad dog story. And I don't remember reading it, but I remember watching the movie and bawling my eyes out. So, <laughs> um, gonna go ahead and give this a try. I might DNF this uh, when it gets to the sad part, but we'll we'll see. Um, but that's going to be the other book I read. I actually have two copies of this. One is really, really old and completely falling apart. And then I have this one, which is a bit colored on. Probably my niece's again, but hey. So we'll give that one a shot too. Um, and that way I can continue to do my Throwback Thursday videos. And then next are the books I'm particularly excited for. So June is my booktube anniversary birthday month. Uh, and I started my channel, I started it, I had the plan to do like book of the month and do discussion questions. And I started that with my favorite author, Nora Roberts, uh, and at the time her newest release, which was Legacy, um, I'll, I'll insert a picture here cause it's on the shelf, but started that cause obviously she's my favorite author. So I thought it'd be fun to go back to that. And I'm going to be reading my favorite book by her that's a standalone anyway because she does a lot of like series, like trilogies, um, some like quartets and such. But this one is called Three Fates and you can see it's a, a bit torn up. Uh, it's seen, seen better days. 
Um, but this is by far my favorite Nora Roberts book that's a standalone. I think because it kind of has that trilogy feel um, that she does in her other books because it follows three siblings and they kind of have this statue that has been passed down um, through the generations to them and they're trying to reunite all the little statues and get them and so it takes them all over the place. Of course Nora Roberts is mainly known as romance author so there's lots of romance in here with their prospective partners and there's also the woman that's trying to get the three fates for herself that they're kind of racing against. So so much fun. I can't wait to read this and share it with you guys. Like I said, I am planning on kind of going back to the roots of the channel where I do discussion questions on this. I'm not going to be doing weekly discussion questions like I started out doing. I'm just going to read the book and kind of do a final set of discussion questions and give you guys my thoughts on the book as a whole. But really excited to reread this one. It's been far too long since I visited these characters. Um, and yeah, excited for this, excited to share it with you guys, so definitely keep an eye out for that. And then next is the books that I want to read that I recently hauled and I just can't wait to read. Um, the first one is going to be The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. Uh, obviously this one's been around a lot on booktube, and this one you have Stella and she is autistic and she decides to hire um what's his name Michael and you know kind of he teaches her how to kiss and do more than that I've heard this is very steamy <laughs> um and I just excited to read not only an author who's autistic but that has an autistic character as well so really really excited to read this and talk about it especially because when I have heard people talk about it very few have mentioned that the character is autistic um, and let alone that the author is autistic which is kind of frustrating you know um, I think that plays an important role in the book and it is something that should definitely be mentioned so really excited to get to that one and then the next one that I really want to read this month, but again, this one's kind of lower on the list because I have others that I need to prioritize um, and others that I want to read before it. But that is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This one, I haven't seen around a whole lot, but I've seen it pop up a few times on BookTube and it just sounds like such an important narrative. Um that you can bring up based on this book. And so this one follows Vanessa, obviously. I was like, I don't know her name. Vanessa. And she, as a teenager, has an affair with a teacher. And then as an adult, somebody, you know, reports him for abuse and harassment and such. And they kind of call upon her to add her story to it. Um, and her experience with him to it. And so she kind of struggles with that, you know. Um, and she kind of reflects back on that time in her life from what I know. Obviously I haven't read it. But really, really excited to read this and see how well done it is. Um, but yeah, hopefully I'll get to that one this month. Um, if not, I'm definitely going to put it on July for sure. The next one that I'm so excited to read and I, I definitely going to get to this one uh, right away. And that is Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. I've obviously seen this one all over BookTube. It's all over the place. And I can't wait to read this. So this is based on the Chinese Moon Goddess um, and that kind of lore and such. And so you have the Moon Goddess and her daughter. And her daughter ends up having to kind of go undercover. Um, and hide from the celestial emperor uh, and so she's actually training alongside the emperor's son and then she ends up having to go and try to save her mother uh, from what I understand and so from what I've heard it has a friends to lovers to enemies trope which I think will be fun and I just love 
getting a, a look at kind of the lore of the moon goddess and being able to kind of research based off this book and learn more about that. Obviously this is fiction, but I think you can learn a lot when it's inspired by, by that. So, um, definitely going to be probably looking up some stuff. And then the next one that I'm probably going to read first, if I'm being honest, is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. This is based on a Korean folklore um, or folktale, which I'm actually familiar with because I do listen to the Myths and Legends podcast, and they covered this one. Uh, and so basically you have this community, and they're kind of ravaged by storms and floods and such. And so they each year sacrifice a girl to the sea god uh, and hoping he'll find his true bride and then cease with the storms and the flooding and such. Uh, and so in this year, her brother's sweetheart is the girl that's going to be sacrificed. And so his brother or her brother tries to stop it. And so she ends up choosing to sacrifice herself. And so from what I understand, after she sacrifices herself, she goes down and tries to find the sea god and ask him to stop, you know, ravaging the community and such. And so it's kind of this adventure um, under the sea. So <laughs> really, really excited for this one. I cannot wait to read it. Like I said, probably going to be the first one up. Definitely keep your eye out because I'll be talking about this one soon. And that was the last one that's officially on the list. Now, if I have a good reading month, especially if I decide not to read the full series that I have, you know, what I have anyway, um, for my 25 Days of Book Miss, so the Tiger's Curse series and the Nine Kingdom series, if I decide to kind of hold off on those after I read the first book and I have more time, or even if I read them and I have more time, I'm hoping to potentially add these next two. The first one is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. And obviously another one that's been all over. The movie is about to come out, if it's not already. I can't remember. I just remember seeing the previews for it. And it looks so good. Uh, and so, yeah. Really, really excited for this one. I believe I actually found this one at a thrift store. I can't remember. Um, but so, so excited for this. And like I said, if I can get to it this month, great. It's not officially on the TBR. Um, and if I don't, then I'll definitely be putting this on for July. But this one follows a girl and she kind of grows up wild. Um, and then there's two boys that kind of take interest in her. And I believe one of them ends up dying. And then they think that she's the one that did it. So um, really, really excited to get to this one. Especially because I want to watch the movie. So, uh, But we'll see if I do or not. Like I said, that was not officially on the TBR. But if I have time, I'm definitely going to be reading it before July. And then the other one, because I enjoyed reading Love, Life, and Elephants by Dame Daphne Sheldrick. Um, that was in my wrap up. I really enjoyed that. It's kind of conservationist, you know, wildlife piece. And so I really want to get to this one next, kind of continue that theme. And it's called Never Cry Wolf, The Amazing True Story of Life Among the Arctic Wolves by Farley Mowat. Um, and so, yeah, I've just kind of been more in, into that, like, conservationist reading mood. <laughs> and so this one says, more than half a century ago, naturalist Farley Mowat accepted an assignment and to investigate why wolves were killing Arctic caribou. Mowat's account of the summer he lived in the frozen tundra alone, studying the wolf population and developing a deep affection for these wild creatures who were of no threat to caribou or man, is today celebrated as a classic of nature writing, at once a tale of remarkable adventure and an indelible record of the myths and magic of wolves. So hopefully, like I said, if I have extra time, we'll be getting to this one. If not, I'll be going on July's TBR as well, um, especially because I am reading The Origin, which very similar themes, obviously. Um, and so, you know, that kind of helps fill that slot for me. Um, but like I said, I'm hoping to get to those two if I have time. If not, 
they're not officially on the TBR. So we'll see if I get to these books. Let me know if you've read any of the books I showed you or if you're excited for any of the books I showed you, like if they're on your radar to read. And let me know which book you are most excited to read in the month of June. Again, make sure you are subscribed and have that bell notification pushed because since it is my book two birthday anniversary month, I'm planning to do some fun things uh, that I don't want you guys to miss out on. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.